What's up guys? Ryan here at Signature Edits and inside of this Lightroom tutorial we are going to be taking a look at some free RAW files that you can edit along with me. So we're going to go through, we got some landscapes, we got some portraits, we got some fun harsh lighting, we got some soft awesome lighting. We're going to be doing the works today so grab yourself some snacks, grab a piece of pie, I don't care. Let's get into it together. Download these free RAW files at SignatureEdits.com slash free raw photos and we'll get started together. Let's do it. All right, let's do it together. So head over to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. You can grab these files and we'll get started. So let's head over into Lightroom here and we're going to start at the beginning. Who would have thought? Okay, so thanks so much to the photographers who did upload their own photos. So thanks to at Nehapu, at Cheviera Boat, at Constantine, at Jagat Pauld Travels, at Julianne Geis, at Khalid Ali, and the anonymous photographers who uploaded these photos. So if you do download these files and they have an Instagram handle in them, make sure to tag that original author so that they can get some credit for their awesome work. All right, let's get started together. We're going to start with this shot right here. So it's a beautiful portrait. I love the lighting. I love the color scheme. I love the pose. It's great. Um, there's a few things that we're going to want to fix. Obviously, we got some real harsh hot spots on her skin and because the light was coming from the side it wasn't super soft and that means that we really brought out the blemishes in her skin so she has good skin but just because it's a side light that's one of the things you got to be aware I'm assuming that's why this happened so we're gonna fix that and then her hairline we can maybe thicken that up a little bit make it a little bit more prominent so let's get going here I'm gonna start with an adjustment brush and I'm actually just gonna do my touch-ups first then do the overall edits after why because I just feel like I just start at the things I know need to be done and do one thing at a time until the image feels good. So what am I doing? I'm just brushing right on here on these areas of her skin that really the texture is needing a little smoothing. So I don't have to be super fussy about this because it's going to be a pretty generic mask. It's not going to be super obvious that it's there. Okay. Looks like I gave her a <laughs> facial treatment. So I'm going to go over here and just take my texture brush, take that down. Let's just reset. I'm using a Soften Skin Desaturate preset that I've got, and you can always pause the video, make this preset, save it yourself. Or you can buy some Signature Edits presets, and they do come with these. But for the sake of this video, let's reset completely. So what I like to do, take your contrast down a little bit. Texture down, clarity down. You can even take the dehaze down a little. Not too much. Sharpness down, and you just got to play with it until it feels right. You don't want to take it too far, obviously, that it's noticeable. You want to keep it transparent, but we do want to fix that skin. So let's start with that. So here's before, and here's after. We're already making some progress, and I'm going to definitely turn off. Looks like we got a lens correction or something going on that's... I actually like it better without the lens correction. Okay. So before, after, we've cleaned up the skin quite a bit. Now we could come in and anything that still needs addressing, we could use our spot removal tool. And for the sake of this tutorial, we're, I'm not going to spend all day on this, but you get the, get the gist of it. We'll go through, get rid of the kind of strongest blemishes here. something like that. And then the areas that still are kind of struggling, we could go through, oh, something weird happened here. Let's fix that. The areas that are still kind of struggling, we could go through and just do this once more. So add a little bit more clarity, take away a little bit more sharpness. Okay, something like that. Okay, and now we could even soften everything overall. So what I'm going to do, go to our basic edits now. Let's add some exposure using the plus key on our keyboard. Of course, we could just drag the slider, but it's just better to learn the shortcuts. It's going to speed things up for you quite a bit. So here's before and here's after. So just doing that skin made a big difference. 
Next thing that I'm going to do is soften everything. So I'm going to take my clarity and take that down. Why am I doing that on everything? Because then I can just selectively add some clarity back where we want it. So it's going to be more transparent than if I tried to paint the mask to just do it on everything. Now I'm going to brush on her eyes, those eyelashes, the eyebrows, the lips. Reset this brush and add some clarity back in. A little bit of texture, a little bit of dehaze, and maybe even make them a little bit brighter. Maybe. Okay. Okay, so what's next? Well, we've got a hairline that needs cleaning up. Maybe in here with her sideburns and her eyebrows, we could clean that up a little bit. Her eyes are also a little bit blue, so the white balance on that needs to be corrected and then just blending everything in overall. So let's get started one thing at a time. Let's do the eyes. So I'm just gonna reset this brush by holding Alt, hit Reset, and then hit O so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just aiming to brush out the white part of her eye. That's one. I'm not being super fussy, because it's not gonna be super noticeable. Two, okay, press O again so I can see what I'm doing, and just take your white balance and bring it up a little bit to warm it up. What's the opposite of blue? Yellow, apparently. Take our saturation down just a little bit. Good. And then I'm going to do another brush on the eyes. And this is just to bring out the color in the irises and make them pop a little bit more. So we're going to do overall brush like that. Take the texture up, take the contrast up, and the highlights up a little bit. Something like that. OK. So before. After you can see they're a lot sharper. We got a lot more detail. We've cleaned up the skin. We're making progress. Okay, down here by her lips, I think that's just because my my mask wasn't careful enough. That there's just a little bit of texture that needs some blending in. So I'm gonna just brush right around like a so. Okay, and on her chin right there, and just take the texture down, clarity down a bit. That'll blend it in. Next, let's go over to her eyebrows and sideburns. So, different ways to do this. Obviously, we could use our spot removal tool. One thing that you might not know is you can actually hold shift, and that'll adjust when you go up and down with your mouse or your trackpad the amount of feather. So I'm going to get rid of most of the feather because I want it to be very accurate here. And then if you actually click and drag your spot removal tool, you can do more than just a spot. You can do a whole section. And then Lightroom being Lightroom will never get it right but we can drag it to a different spot to replace the skin from. Take my opacity up. Bear with me as Lightroom is really tired right now. Still waking up. Okay, so here's before. Wow, the delay. <laughs> so I need to upgrade computers. And here's after. Now it's not perfect. I'd go as far as to say maybe it's not even good. This is more of a Photoshop job, but I'm just showing you it is possible when your computer isn't having a heart attack like mine is right now. So you could go in there. And then my trick, if Lightroom isn't able to do it like super well, then you can just set the opacity a little bit lower so it doesn't totally fix it, but it blends in okay. So I'm gonna grab, oh geez. Oh geez, Lightroom. Like really, that's what you think heal is? We're gonna go to clone. I'm gonna set my feather way up turn my opacity down, and eventually here, in theory, we're going to unfreeze and everything's going to be better. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, we're going to abandon this because we got things to do, people. <laughs> All right, so we could do the exact same thing with her sideburn here. There's just a little hair coming out in front of her ear, so I could clean this up. I'm not gonna be able to get rid of this inside of Lightroom. I need to go into Photoshop. But what I can do is just drag this onto an area of skin that's kinda gonna blend, hopefully. And with my opacity down and my feather up, you're gonna see that it minimizes what's going on. It's not as noticeable as it was before, before, after, right? So just some options if you're using the spot removal tool. Let's try a couple other things. First off, I'm going to grab this hot spot here on her skin and calm that down a little bit. And same with on her cheek and on her nose. They're just a little bit too prominent. So let's reset. I'm going to pull my highlights back a little bit and my contrast down a little bit. 
Maybe even my white's down. Nah. Okay, there's before and there's after. Probably went a little bit too hard. Okay, so we've made some progress so far. Lastly, let's try doing something about the hairline just to make it a little bit more, um, what's the word, uniform? Right, so that it starts at the same place rather than like a little bit of stray hair. So to do that, just a little brush right on that area. I could come back and clean that up later. Just turn your contrast up, take your shadows down, and that'll help give the sense that it's a little bit thicker. It won't just, it won't be so noticeable, basically. It's not gonna totally fix it. That's more of a Photoshop job, but you could do that. And we could also play around with some spot removal, of course, if Lightroom wasn't already hard working enough. Wait for it, wait for it. Mm, not a great guess, Lightroom, but I've seen worse. Before, after. Okay. Last of all, I'm just going to try and even out. If you look at her skin complexion, and then you look at the complexion of her shoulders and neck, her skin up top seems to be a little bit more warm, a little bit more saturated, and a little bit more smooth. So I'm just going to brush on the lower area, like so. And then I'm going to take the contrast down, take my warmth up just a bit so that it kind of feels like it matches a little bit more. And then our clarity down a little bit and our exposure could even come down. Great. Okay, so we could keep playing forever, but hopefully that gives you some ideas of what you can do if you've got a portrait and you're trying to touch it up. Let's move on. All right, this photo is beautiful. Props to Napfu. <laughs> Sorry if I got your name wrong, my friend. Um, but this is absolutely wonderful. The exposure is great. If you press the J key on your keyboard, you'll be able to see if any area of the image is pure white, so blown out or pure black and clipped. And you'll see that it can be a useful tool when you're editing. So what I'm going to do in this particular example, I'm going to pull my highlights back. I'm going to pull my shadows up, and I'm going to pull my contrast down and my exposure down a little bit. Why am I doing that? Because I want to maximize the dynamic range. So now I'm going to take my black point, I'm going to press J on my keyboard to make sure that's on, and take it down just until I start to clip. So you can see that blue showing up on the right hand side. So that is kind of where I want my blacks to sit. I could do the same thing with my whites. Just take that white point up until that area of the sky is white. So here's before and here's after. So, so far we've just gotten rid of a bunch of contrast, but now we're going to add it back in by going to the tone curve. And the nice part about doing this, rather than just doing it with the contrast slider inside of Lightroom, is we can selectively decide where we want to add the contrast. So we can add contrast just by dropping the shadows, rather than by adding contrast to the highlights and possibly blowing out that sky. So that's kind of the idea and the reason I'm doing it that way. Something like that. So you're going to see we get a little bit more pop, a little bit more color in the sky this way. Now it really depends what you're feeling. I'm going to press J again so those blue lines go away. You could add your contrast back, you could drop your exposure a little bit. It's up to you. I think this image is absolutely beautiful, doesn't need a whole lot. Maybe I could enhance these clouds a little bit just to make them pop a little bit more on the screen because I think they're super pretty. So I'm doing a super rough mask. If you press O, you can see what you're doing. O for overlay. Just to grab those clouds. And then what I'm going to do is just grab the highlights and turn them up. <laughs> and you're going to see that did a terrible job. Sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you cannot. If I press on my contrast, maybe, maybe take my whites up. Nope. So you got to be aware, sometimes Lightroom does exactly what you want, and sometimes not so much. So here's before, here's after. Added a little clarity, a little bit of highlight pop, just to make those clouds stand out slightly more. So there's our before image, and here's our after. Bravo, Ryan, bravo, he said to himself. Okay, <laughs> moving on to this tunnel. What do we want to do here? Well, I think the image is kind of cool, but it's also kind of cluttered. We want to add some direction. And the easiest way to do that is by shaping the light. So first I'm going to adjust this white balance. It's really green, which makes sense considering it's taken in a green forest. I'm going to go down to my HSL, kind of play around with this. So I might take the saturation down a little bit in my yellows. There's before, there's after. And then my oranges, I might take the saturation up just a tad. Now there's a kazillion, a literal kazillion different ways we could take this. We could warm up our yellows. 
We could take our oranges, make them a little bit more red. We could drop our exposure slightly. And then I'm going to play with the light. So I'm going to just mask pretty much everything in the foreground and take the exposure way down. Okay. Then I'm going to take add a little focus by bringing the clarity and the texture down in our foreground. Something like that. Okay, drop my overall exposure. And then I want this path to stay illuminated, so we're going to add some texture and some clarity to that. Bring the highlights up, the whites up. And now, to make sure it doesn't look like I just dropped the exposure on everything here, which is what I did, I'm going to have to add a little bit of light back. So I'm going to take my highlights and my whites up on a brush. And then just the areas in here that look like they should be bright, I'm going to paint a little bit. So, do 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 do. Not super strategic here. Just going through and highlighting a few areas. If I press O, you can see where I've painted. Maybe if Lightroom decides to catch up. All right, so Lightroom has caught its breath. You can see just a very rough mask. It's adding a little bit of brightness back to certain areas to make it just seem a little bit less like I've taken everything and darkened it down. Okay, so another way that we could do this same process instead of manually painting it is just brush on everything again. Press O, make sure we got it. There we go. Now we're actually going to set it to range mask, go to luminance, and we're going to target the bright areas of this mask. So if I slide this up, it's going to find the brightest areas in the selection I've made. Okay, now the reason this is really helpful is now I can just brighten those areas of this mask. And the whole thing's going to feel a whole lot more transparent than if I tried to manually do it. And it's just a lot faster. Something like that. We could even take the clarity down maybe a little bit in those bright areas. Kind of like the sun's coming through a little bit and add a little saturation. Okay. So here's before. And here's after. Okay, so here's our image as it was, image as it is. Now we can go through and edit the overall image. Let's add a little bit of contrast, maybe. We're looking pretty contrasty, I don't know. Then let's go to our tone curve, our trusty tone curve. Add a little bit of a pop in the highlights. And then maybe adjust the hue of our greens here. Let's just see how we're feeling. Let's go extreme. So let's take the hue like that. Let's take our saturation down a little bit more. So before, after. See how we've just added a little bit more focus to the image overall? Now you might like this, you might not. I'd love to see what you actually create. Make sure you tag at, uh, what is that, Echeveria Botes? <laughs> Make sure you tag them so they can see your work too and tag at Signature Edits Co. I'd love to check it out. All right, this photo, again, another beautiful photo, many things that we could do, but because it was taken at a great time of day, we don't have any highlights blown, we don't have any shadows clipped. We've got a lot of options here. We could take our shadows up and our highlights down, take our contrast down in the image overall, press J. Now I'm going to take my white point, take that up right until around it clips, somewhere around there. Take my black point, take that down till around there. Now, if you have blue in your image, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Like, you can do that. It's about what feels right rather than technically. <laughs> it's okay to have things that are black in the photo actually be black. That's all right. So I'm not going to worry about clipping too, too much. I just want to kind of get it in the ballpark. Now, I'm going to go down to my tone curve, and we're going to play the tone curve game by adding a basic S curve. Is this, if this is confusing for you, go ahead and watch my tone curve tutorial video elsewhere on the ch channel. Press J again so I can see what I'm doing. And for some reason, it's not even showing me. There we go. There's the clipped highlights. Now, the sky has been taken too far, slash, it's too bright compared to our foreground. So I'm actually going to roll that back. I'm going to brighten the mid tones instead, maybe. 
Sometimes you just got to play around. And you'll find an even better solution. Okay. Somewhere like that. Okay, go up here again. Let's add a little bit of dehaze. Nope, that that does not feel right. Let's try masking and actually just mask out this guy. I will make sure I've got auto mask selected. Do one of those. Good. Reset my brush adjustments. And I'm going to take my contrast down in the sky and my exposure down a little bit. Then brighten everything by pressing shift and the plus key. Now it's a fine line because you don't want it to feel too much like HDR, but you also don't want that sky to be way too bright for the foreground. So, uh, is it a perfect mask? No, you're going to see there's some really weird banding going on down there. So there's two options. We can either hold Alt to toggle to our eraser and erase some of the mask down there. Let's take off our auto mask. So we can erase some of that. And that might help blend a little bit. Or we can dial back what we're doing here so it's not so obvious. The choice is yours, my friend. The choice is yours. So, before, after, I'm not really feeling like I'm nailing it with this particular image, but we've brought out some color in the sky, and I'm definitely going to go to my lens corrections and shut them off. It's funny, sometimes the lens corrections help, sometimes it makes everything so much worse. Like, look at that. After lens corrections, before. Jeez. Get it right, Adobe. Okay, and then, of course, we could brush in our foreground here, brighten up that lake. Do the same thing with this mountainy cliff thing. Shut off that overlay with the J key. It's all about sculpting the light. I'm not a master of it, but that's some different strategies you can employ. I'd love to see what you come up with. Okay, this photo, absolutely beautiful by Constantine. I don't even know what to do with this because I love it, kind of as is. So we could add a little bit of contrast and then just raise our shadows a little bit. And then this beautiful countryside in the distance, I'm going to try and mask that. So there's a few ways I could do it. I could grab the auto mask like that, press O. And it did an okay-ish job. Hold down Alt to toggle to your eraser. Make sure your flow isn't set so low that it doesn't do anything. Okay. Press O again. And then I'm going to grab my highlights, bring them back. Add a little bit of dehaze. A little bit of saturation. A little bit of contrast. Now that might look great zoomed in. It might look horrible zoomed out. I don't know. That looks not too bad. So here's before, here's after. We've just kind of brought that back, maybe slightly too much. I'm just going to take the shadows and bring them up a little, as well as my blacks. So before, after, we've just added a little color there. And then the sky we could get to be nice and blue. Here's the easiest way to do that. We're going to just do a really rough, don't pay too much attention mask. Okay. Now I'm going to go and open up my range mask. Go to luminance, take the range, and pressing O so I can see what's happening here. Set it all the way up so it's only grabbing the brightest parts of that image. Now, theoretically, we've masked out the sky and nothing else. We can test it by just taking our exposure. Yep, and we even got some clouds still in there. Nice. I am going to erase it off of these hills because we already masked them. Just try and clean that up a little bit. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to add some contrast. We're going to add some whites maybe and drop some blacks. And then the easiest way to add blue to sky, just take the white balance and make it more blue. Isn't that awesome? And then you take your highlights, 
we might have to do the clouds in a separate mask. Okay. Now the other way of doing this, of course, is instead of doing a brush, I could have just grabbed a graduated filter like this. This is actually a better idea. And do the same thing. So take our white balance down towards blue. Make sure we go to range mask, luminance, turn that range mask all the way up. So it's only grabbing the sky and then erase our brush settings or dial them back. So you can see the difference that makes. Of course, if you play with it longer, it's going to be a lot better. Lastly, let's just think of a few things we could feature in this foreground. I really love these pots, so I'm just gonna brighten them up, take the sh highlights up and the whites up a little bit. And then this doorway, I feel like that's kind of a prominent feature. So we'll bring that out a little bit. Make sure we turn our flow up so we're doing something when we actually brush. So that's what it's all about. You figure out, okay, what do I want my eye to focus on? Let's enhance that. What don't I want it to focus on? Let's not worry about that. So this little lamp, this little thing right here, this bike and these flowers are actually really cool. So here's before that and after. Just adds a little bit more interest and dimension to the scene. So before and after. We could definitely clean this mask up a little bit, but I think you're getting the understanding of what I'm trying to communicate, so we'll move on. All right, so this photo, there's a million ways we could go. Let's try something kind of darker and moodier. So I'm going to drop the exposure right away. I'm going to attempt to warm it up a little bit. And then let's just take our dehaze down and see what that'll actually do. Okay, it depends what we want to go for. It's already pretty dark, pretty moody. I'm going to go to my color grading and we're just going to see what we can come up with with this. So we're going to go make these shadows kind of like a purpley blue. Highlights, we could do the exact opposite and make them orange. There's not really any highlights in here, so it's not going to do much. And then midtones, again, we could just find something else to pair with that blue or go with the same color. I'm thinking sort of feeling more of like a greenish blue. So here's before that and after. You can do a lot with just the color grading panel. And then because I don't really like photos that are taken at an angle, I'm gonna fix that. Like so, sure. Again, tons of different things we could try. We could go to our tone curve. If you hit a single point like that and then you double click over here, you're gonna make a clipping mask that then you can clip the blacks. Kind of add more of a filmy fade and do the same thing on the whites. That's not gonna do much probably because we don't have any whites in this scene. But what we're doing is we're making the whole thing more creamy overall. So I don't know, here's before, here's after. You can do a lot with the tone curve, just depends what you want. All right. Moving on, this photo has a crane in it, so we're going to fix that. We're also just going to maximize the dynamic range, maybe see if we can get that sky back a little bit. So we'll start by just doing the basics. Contrast up a little bit, exposure down. I'm going to take my blacks up, press J to see if I'm clipping anything. And I'm not, so that's good. Take my white point and take that up a little bit. So here's before, here's after, we've just added some pop. Now I'm gonna zoom in on this crane, and I should be able to get rid of this with just the spot removal tool. So, two things I'm gonna do. First thing, I'm gonna zoom in real close and attempt to just get this part of the crane that's really close to this building. Like so. Take my opacity up to 100. All right, so that's part one. Part two, if you actually grab this, click once, press shift, and then click on the other end, you're going to see it makes a straight line. And then we can just grab whatever area of sky we want to replace it with. Take my feather up a little bit so it blends slightly better. And set it to heal maybe instead of clone. Good. Before, after. And you can see it kind of missed this spot right here. So let's just attempt to fix it. 
the links I go to to avoid Photoshop. Truly marvelous. All right, so we're doing okay here. I think we could maybe just bring out this fence, possibly. Make sure my auto mask is shut off. Good. Just to add a little bit more interest into the foreground of the shot, because everything down here in the bottom half of the image is pretty dark. So if I'm able to brighten the fence a little bit, it'll just add a little bit more focus, a little bit of interest in our foreground. So here's before, here's after. Press J so you don't see the clipping. Like that. So here's before, here's after. I could keep messing around for days. I think you get the point. So we'll move on to this photo because it's really cool. Well done to whoever uploaded this. I love it. So I want to bring out the color in this wall without making our friend here so saturated that he looks like an Oompa Loompa. So how do I do that? Well, there's two options, and I'm going to do the easy one, which is I'm just going to take my auto mask, turn it on, and paint on our subject. Un de toi. Okay, not the best mask of my life, not the worst. I'm going to try and clean it up here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's not completely perfect on his clothes, I just want to make sure that his skin in particular and his face are masked well. All right, so press O again, reset my brush, and I just want to take the contrast way down on him. Highlights down a little bit, and saturation down a little bit, and dehaze down. Now that's going to look really, really weird, but bear with me because now what we're going to do, since we took the contrast and the dehaze down, is I can turn that up in the overall image and he'll still feel normal. So take the dehaze up, contrast up a little bit, exposure up a little bit, saturation up a little bit. Here's before, here's after. So a really easy way to make the background pop. Now he's still looking a little bit too bright, so we're going to try and get back to him. Somewhere around there. And let's turn our saturation down even a little bit more. And then take our overall vibrance up. And then a little saturation. Before, apre. Now we could take it a step further, of course. You can mess around with all sorts of other things. Add some more contrast in our tone curve. That's way too much. But you catch my drift. Okay. Moving on. Now this photo, I've tried editing before, and honestly, there's nothing I was super happy with because I think at the end of the day, to me, this shot is not super compelling. I, I don't know why. I think it's because there's just not like a clear focus. Um, obviously, there is this cross here, and that is the clear focus of the photo, but I don't know. Some photos do it for you, some don't, you know? And this one's beautiful, but I just don't have a whole lot of inspiration. But what I will do, I'm going to attempt to fix the white balance of this room by taking our blue down, magenta up. That's going to change the white balance in here with our window light. So we're just going to mask that area out and the reflection on the floor here, the parts of the photo that are now too blue. Reset our brush, warm that up. Blend it in. Okay, and then the reflection on the door is also a little bit too blue. So we're going to do the same thing. Reset. Make that warm. So when you start doing your images, really, the first thing you want to do is just focus on what needs to be fixed. What areas of light just need correction? Here's before. Well, that's not super helpful. Let's create a virtual copy. And show you, with the same exposure, the difference that makes. So here's before, what we had for color. And here's after. So we've really just kind of evened it out a little bit. And then we can warm everything up a little. And decide what elements we want to exaggerate. So I'm going to go in here, do a really rough mask. Press O to see what that mask looks like. Okay. 
range mask, luminance, target just the bright areas, which is this white. And then I'm going to take the whites and the highlights up. So that's going to add some really nice selective contrast to the image, rather than if I just brighten the whole area up. And I could even extend that to into this room as well, on this archway, and on the floor. So here's before that, and after. Okay, whole image looks a little bit too contrasty. Before, after. And if you want to darken it down and get that drama back, before, after. And last of all, let's just do a quick brush on the window here. Pull the clarity back a little, highlights back, and the contrast back. Before, after. All right, we got one last shot to do together. And this guy right here, I'm going to take my white balance up, 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 until it starts to feel good, and my exposure way down until we kind of get that sky back. Somewhere around there. Now it's looking a little bit yellow. We're going to add a little bit magenta. Okay. So we got some work to do, obviously. First thing I'm going to do is selectively brighten up part of this image. We can do that by taking our contrast way down. Take our highlights up a little bit. Shadows up, but not too, too much because we don't want it to look weird. Probably around there. Whites we could take down, blacks we can take up. So now we've created a really flat looking image. Here's before, here's after. Now we're gonna add the contrast back selectively. Do that with our brush. And easiest way is probably gonna be, you guessed it, to do a range mask. So the elements that I really wanna bring out and add a little bit of contrast to are the dock, obviously, the bike, the people on the dock, and these ducks. So let's go to our range mask, go to luminance. This time we're going to take our luminance mask. Press O so I can see what I'm doing and take that range down. So I only want to target the dark areas of my selection. Erase it off of these bushes. Okay. And then we'll take our highlights up, our whites up. Why do that instead of the exposure? Because if you do exposure, it's going to take everything up and it's going to feel weird. Whereas if you just take the bright parts of the image up, it feels a lot more natural. Take my clarity up, maybe, and even a little bit of dehaze. And then my blacks down. So we just added a lot of contrast to that. Here's before, here's after. It's probably too far. <laughs> so we'll dial it back a little bit. Before, after. We're making progress. Now to our overall image, let's add some texture, maybe. A little bit of dehaze. Cool. Next, these trees are looking a little bit too HDR to me, so I'm going to brush on them. Same strategy. Go to our range mask, luminance, set it to the dark point. Press O so I can see it. That looks good. And we're just going to add some contrast. Bam. 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 Okay. And the same thing for our sky. I guess this tutorial is more about range masks than anything else so far. Same thing. Press O. Range mask. Luminance. You're going to be really good at this by the end of it. Just like that. You can see how much time that saves and how accurate that mask is compared to anything I could have done. So I want to add some pink to the sky. And then I really want to bring out those clouds. We're going to add some clarity. A little bit of dehaze, maybe. Dial back on that pink. Increase the saturation a bit. Okay. And I kind of want to do the exact same thing on the water. So I'm going to take this mask. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to brush that on the lake part. And erase it. off of this guy. And we're going to have to play with the luminance setting because you can see that water is darker. 
So we just need to find the area that it's sitting in, which is somewhere around there-ish. Press O. Okay, increase our highlights a little on the water and our whites a little bit. That's looking better. So here's before and here's after. So that does it for this week's tutorial. I hope it's been helpful for you and you've learned a thing or two. Please let me know in the comments what was helpful, what wasn't. Um, do you have any tips, tricks that I missed? I would love to hear about them. And if you have suggestions or requests for future videos, always want to hear those. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. If not, give it a thumbs down. I don't care. We're friends anyways. And if you want some free presets, I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, in the meantime, go create something awesome. Have a great week, my fine friend. Peace.